Hey guys, we are Sean and Christy Michael of the world famous Long Long Honeymoon blog, also known as Lo Lo Ho. Today we've got a really fascinating, if counterintuitive topic. We're going to give you our top 13 tips for successful overnight parking your RV in a Walmart parking lot. And I know that there are some of you out there right now who are having a very negative reaction. You're saying, Sean, that is the worst idea for a camping topic I've ever heard. Bear with me for a moment. Yes, in theory, ideally, it would be nice if every day uh, you were able to park your RV on a beach at the Grand Canyon, maybe in Yellowstone or Glacier, mm -hmm. maybe up in Alaska, and uh, birds would be singing and greeting you every morning and your coffee would always be hot. So, you know, yes, in a perfect world, we'd like to stay in national parks every day too. But in reality, we live about 2,000 miles from Yellowstone. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of ground to cover between here and the park. And we do stay in a lot of independently run campgrounds that are really nice, that we really enjoy. So we're not telling you to not do that, but you know, sometimes if you're just trying to get from point A to point B and you don't have a lot of time to linger, trying to make the most of your day of driving, overnight parking is your best option and it's safer for everyone because you know, you can stop when you're tired. Sometimes we even just stopped in the middle of the day for a couple of hours to take a break, you know, and then we get out and keep driving. It's an oasis of asphalt that is welcoming to your rig. That's right. No so, reservation required. Stopping at these sorts of places is an important part of the whole RV equation if you really want to use your rig to see North America. A viable question up front is, can you do this anywhere? Can you stop in any Walmart parking lot? There's an old urban legend that Sam Walton, the founder of Walmart, was a big RV camper, and he really loved the RV lifestyle, and so he always wanted to allow RVs to park at Walmart. I have no idea if that's true or not, because <laughs> I didn't know Sam Walton. It sounds good. <laughs> it sounds good, and I will say that uh, for the most part, Walmarts have been very welcoming throughout North America. When I say that, I mean from the Deep South all the way up to uh, Alaska. This also applies for uh, Walmarts in Canada. The only place we've had trouble have been usually communities where there's a local ordinance uh, forbidding this practice. Mm -hmm. I don't know how strictly these things are enforced. Mm -hmm. There is that risk that, you know, if you're in an area that does not allow overnight parking, you might get a knock on your door at four in the morning asking you to leave. Now, I will say one time in California, we stopped and parked in this Walmart where there were a lot of other RVs. And next morning I got up and I went outside and we had parked right underneath the no overnight parking sign blatantly think, violating yeah. the law and i think in a lot of towns they really are trying to discourage big rig trucks from parking overnight not so much rv campers so sometimes i think that might be the case rather than rvs but you know some people say that you should always go in and ask we basically usually drive around if there's no sign saying that you can't we park there and also if we see other rvs there we park there there are some Walmart parking lots that literally are like campgrounds, the one near Glacier National Park. I mean, when we stayed there, there were probably 40 RVs in the parking lot. The uh, Walmart in Whitehorse, Yukon Territory. So there are a lot of places where you see it's very common. But you know, surprisingly, some Walmart parking lots are really well landscaped and can be in scenic areas. I mean, the we, Palm Springs Walmart is really nice. Yeah, two thumbs up for yes. the Palm Springs, California Walmart. Yep. Beautiful landscaping. Yes. If there's any question about whether or not you can stop at a certain Walmart, one thing you can do is call. I mean, we, yeah. from time to time, will call in advance when we're en route to a place and just ask if it's okay for us to park there. Mm -hmm. um, some people will say you could go inside and talk to the manager if you have intentions of parking there. I think that's a little weird, personally. We've like, just called, and usually they know. A lot of times they'll just say, oh yeah, sure, no problem. And sometimes I have had them say, well, hold on, let me ask, and they'll come back and say, sure, no problem. Um, I've never had anybody on the phone tell me no. So without further ado, we're gonna get straight to the tips. <laughs> 
Our first tip, you guys have it so easy these days. You youngsters with your GPS devices. Spoiled, spoiled, spoiled. Find Walmarts using your GPS. Now, this is a no-brainer today, but back in the old days of RV camping, like, you know, Ooh, 2007, 2007. Uh, we had to hunt for Walmarts. But today, you can just do a GPS search and find the Walmart uh, where you might want to stop. When you do your search, search for a Walmart Supercenter. Yes, very or, important. As our GPS pronounces it, Supercenter. He's a little snobby in British, but that's okay. So look for a Walmart Supercenter. Yeah. Why a Supercenter? Because these are the larger Walmarts. The smaller ones we call Small Marts. <laughs> and you can't actually always overnight park at a Small Mart. A lot of times their parking lots are a lot smaller. You know, they're in sort of smaller little neighborhood areas. Um, so, you know, it's just not easy to get in and out of those a lot of times. So the, the Supercenter brand actually does mean something. I mean, for one thing, it means they'll have a full grocery store inside the Walmart complex. Uh, but it also usually means a much larger parking lot. Let's say that you've got your Walmart selected. You know where you're going. Mm -hmm. Now we're getting down to the nitty gritty of best practices for parking in the Walmart. First of all, you pretty much want to park in Siberia. Yes. I mean, this is kind of obvious, but you don't want to park your 50 foot rig right next to the front door. You really want to be in the far reaches of the parking lot and look specifically for low traffic areas. Mm -hmm. And what do I mean by low traffic areas? Well, if you size up, pretty much any Walmart parking lot, you can quickly ascertain where the traffic is flowing. You know, the in and out, the in and exit, you know, you just want to steer clear of those. I mean, you can sort of see there are certain channels of traffic, but e mm -hmm. even on the perimeter of the parking lot, you'll, you'll figure out there are certain lanes that a lot of people tend to use when they're getting in and out of the Walmart. You want to be away from those, mainly because it protects you from the incompetence of your fellow drivers. <laughs> because people have been known to wreck their cars and to park, park cars vehicles. and park vehicles. And you know, you don't want to be sleeping, sleeping in the back of your rig and have somebody drive through your living room. Of course, it's good for Walmart. You're not taking up a lot of parking spaces right next to the door because that's where everybody wants to park. So sure. we look for those low traffic areas and we look for a buffer or edge area. Mm -hmm. And now we don't always park on the edge, but quite often the far perimeter of the parking lot is the best choice. Mm -hmm. When you have that buffer of a curb on one side, well, it just protects you. There's not going to be any traffic on that side. And by the way, it's quieter for you also. Sure. I mean, you're not listening to cars drive past. And somebody's not going to come park right next to your rig at six in the morning on their way to work and slam their door and wake you up. Or... Although you'd be surprised. Yeah, this is true. <laughs> you would think sometimes you're in this huge expanse of a parking lot and there's like a million spaces and then some guy pulls in right in front of, of the front of our rig. So it's like to get out, we have to back out. And I remember one time uh, we were at a Walmart parking lot in South Carolina and um, <laughs> we were awakened at like six in the morning. On a Saturday. By the local Humane Society was like having a spay and neuter clinic spay and neuter and clinic. the drop off was set up literally like four feet from our back bumper so we woke up to all these dogs barking and like, like cats meowing i mean it was just like, it was like what, what is going what the on the hell is going on and like it was a huge expanse <laughs> of parking lot and they set this thing up right outside our window i don't know but so you'd be surprised what might happen but yeah. anyway parking in siberia helps you avoid those type of situations <laughs> usually and sometimes, you know, we like to park under the large lights in the parking lot, just one for safety, you know, so you're sort of illuminated there. It's, it's another buffer. And sometimes the little, you know, curbed areas with trees in them. Yeah, if you can't park on the edge, you look for those little buffer zones that are laid out through the landscaping and so forth mm -hmm. throughout the parking lot. In our philosophy, there is strength and safety in numbers. Uh, in other words, usually when you're Walmart overnight parking, you will see other RVs doing the same thing, especially in certain parts of the country. Yes. So we usually park in the little RV neighborhood <laughs> <laughs> that tends to crop up late afternoon, early mm -hmm. evening in these certain Walmart parking lots. I always feel better if you see some other RV travelers uh, kind of in your vicinity. Right. 
next tip. Walmart parking lots are not terribly level. <laughs> so this is a lesson that you'll probably figure out one time, but you want to park so that your headboard of your bed is angled in the upwards direction. Yeah, you don't want your feet above your head. So <laughs> no. however your bed is configured in your rig, ours is actually kind of sideways. Ours isn't front to back, it's sideways. So really that side to side level makes a big difference for our head and our feet. If your bed is, you know, front to back in your rig, then it's probably a little less of an issue. You're worried about rolling off your bed or you know, right. rolling into your partner or whatever. So take that into consideration yeah. just for your own personal comfort. You know, you, you don't want to be sleeping like this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe you do. I might like that. <laughs> Next tip, be a good guest. <laughs> you are not camping no. in the Walmart parking lot. You You're parking. Overnight parking. This is not a tailgate session. Don't break out your grill or like fire up your stereo or whatever you normally would do at a tailgate. It's kind of a violation of etiquette to extend your awning. Don't put down your stabilizer jacks. Mm -hmm. Uh, things like that. You don't want to look like you're like Living setting there. up for the long term. <laughs> <laughs> no flamingos, no potted plants. No flags. No flags, no rugs. Sorry. Yeah. Lawn chairs. Campfires are frowned upon. Yeah. You want to look like you're overnight parking. You park, you're going to rest, and then the next morning you move on. Mm -hmm. Walmart doesn't have to allow us to park there overnight. They allow RV campers to do it for a variety of reasons, but we want to be good citizens and good guests and be on our best behavior. And so not only do you not litter, from time to time if you see litter, you might even pick it up and toss it in one of the many available receptacles. <laughs> And the funny thing about RV uh, Walmart parking lots is a lot of times you have to be prepared for this. In the middle of the night, sometimes they have um, street sweepers that come through and actually clean their parking lots. So if you hear that in the middle of the night, don't be alarmed. That's right. That's part of the entire uh, ambiance of the yes. Walmart parking lot at five in the morning, believe me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it goes uh, without saying that to be a good guest, you might go inside and do a little bit of shopping because uh, certainly there's a symbiotic relationship here. And another little tip is if you want to watch a current movie, you can yes. go inside and they usually have like a red box or even their own proprietary uh, little machine that dispenses new release DVDs. Yeah. Entertainment too. So I want to talk for just a minute about safety because safety is always an important consideration. Yes. Always carry an AK-47. <laughs> no, 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 no. Just kidding, kid. We have stopped overnight at Walmart parking lots throughout the country mm -hmm. and have had very few issues. I can think of maybe two different occasions yeah, two. when we felt that our spidey sense was going off, that something was wrong in the parking lot, <laughs> that it, it was not a place to linger. When we detected that there might be a problem, guess what we did? We left. Yep. Our rig has wheels. And that's what I advise for you to do if your intuition is telling you that it might not be a safe area. Now, in reality, Walmart parking lots are generally well lit. Mm -hmm. They are often patrolled by private security. Yes. And there are cameras everywhere recording what's going on out there. Mm -hmm. So it's a relatively safe place to stop. But if you get the vibe that it's not safe, what you do is you leave. Yeah. And there are a lot of other places you could potentially go. Truck stops, by and large, are always a relatively safe place to stop. Yeah, They're also the kind of noisy, and yeah. uh, they're a lot louder than a Walmart parking lot. So, you know, we've stopped at uh, truck stops. We've stopped at Cabela's. Cabela's is a, a great place if you can find one because they even have dump, they have dump stations. <laughs> yeah. And free fresh water free fresh water and dump station. So mm -hmm. that's great. We have stopped at uh, Cracker, Barrel. Cracker Barrel. Now, when we stopped at Cracker Barrel, we did confirm with the management that it was okay to park there and they were very accommodating. And they usually have big rig parking because they get a lot of like tour buses and stuff. So if you ever get the sense that it's not cool to be in the Walmart parking lot, you just move on, you'll find mm -hmm. another place. That concludes our little list of tips for overnight parking in Walmart parking lots. Mm -hmm. We've done it in a lot of places. We've had very, very few negative issues or experiences. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're grateful to have this kind of option because 
if you really are going to use your rig, I mean in hardcore, hit the road and get out there and see America, you're going to take advantage of this from time to time. Hopefully these tips will help you. Yeah, don't be scared to do it. You know, we heard about it when we first got our RV and we were like, oh, I don't know if we wanna do that. That seems kind of sketchy. And then we got in a situation where we really needed a place to stop and there was a Walmart and so we did it. And you know, once you do it, it's super easy. We are Sean and Christy Michael of Long Long Honeymoon. If you have not already subscribed, what are you waiting for? Subscribe. That button is just waiting for you to press it. Until next time, we're wishing you a hearty Lolo -lo -ho. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you disliked it, give it a thumbs down. Feel free to leave a comment. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. If you liked the video, thumbs up. If you didn't like it, you.